Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, October 15th, 2021. Let's talk about Bitcoin now that it's back around $60,000 and now that there's talk about a U.S.-based Bitcoin ETF. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, for Bitcoin, folks, no ETF is needed. Right? I understand there's going to be a demand for an ETF, but no ETF is needed for you to realize the astonishing value, the competitive advantage, the huge upcoming appreciation that Bitcoin has. Understand the value of Bitcoin is in its scarcity, its reliability, its portability its fungibility, and its decentralization, right? For those of you in centralized crypto, and we'll talk about some centralized crypto here, understand the last one is vital, right? The value in Bitcoin doesn't come from an ETF investment strategy. Let me also say too, that people in the United States need to realize that there already are Bitcoin ETFs globally. Right? One such ETF out of Canada is called Purpose Bitcoin ETF. You can find out more information by looking up purposeinvest.com. In fact, let me make sure I have that correct. Right? Purposeinvest.com. And on that site, you will get all the information you need about the Purpose Bitcoin ETF. Right, so let's not get too carried away. I know a lot of people feel there's a wall of money out there, institutional money, and that once the U.S. approves a Bitcoin ETF, that institutional money is going to come flooding off the sidelines into the Bitcoin ETF. Folks, I, I got to tell you, institutional money is savvy. If they wanted to be in a Bitcoin ETF, they would be already. Right? Again, you have Bitcoin ETFs all over the globe. Let's also talk about something that concerns a lot of people. The idea of actually retaining custody over your Bitcoin. Right, some people start trembling when you mention things like cold storage or a ledger wallet or a treasure wallet. People are worried. They don't know what that means. Right, they get the ledger wallet, then they see that they need to have a sign in code and they completely panic. Right, well, just understand you already have excellent and very affordable. Bitcoin custodial services. Just Google the custodial service offered by Gemini, right? The Winklevoss twins company. You're going to find out that you only have to pay 40 basis points to store your Bitcoin. And understand, folks, it's cold storage. In other words, it's not connected to the net. The net could go down. Someone could hack their system and still not reach your Bitcoin. Right? So you can buy Bitcoin on an exchange and just transfer it to Gemini Custodial Service, Gemini Custody, right? After signing up for Gemini Custody. And guess what? your Bitcoin would already be in cold storage. So forgive me. I've been in Bitcoin for years. You know, whether or not the U.S. passes a Bitcoin ETF doesn't concern me anymore. Right? I'm optimistic. One will probably get approved in the next few days. But if the theory is that sophisticated money is now suddenly going to feel safe, 
investing in Bitcoin, you've got to be kidding me. Sophisticated money would already know about custodial services. They would already know about Bitcoin ETFs in other countries. Let's shift gears. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about a centralized ecosystem here, right? Bitcoin is very unique in terms of its level of decentralization. We're going to talk about a centralized ecosystem here that has certain advantages. When it's centralized, transactions can happen more quickly. But just understand, centralized ecosystems are much more vulnerable. If the government wants to shut you down, they know where to find you. Right? If it's centralized, if the government is able to hit it at the core, they could stop a lot of the ecosystem. You can't do that with Bitcoin. Right? Bitcoin doesn't have a headquarters. Bitcoin's decentralized. Bitcoin doesn't have a king. Right? Miners can just randomly decide, hey, I think I'm going to start mining Bitcoin. If you have the mining power and the know-how, you can do it. That's how decentralized it is. You get into the world of proof of stake. If you move away from proof of work and you get into the world of proof of stake, then it's very different. Then you have appointed validators. Now I'm an investor, full disclosure, in Binance coin. Right? Binance is a huge, wildly successful <clears throat> cryptocurrency ecosystem. How successful? Binance a few days ago, the parent company, announced that they were going to invest not a million dollars, not a hundred million dollars, that they were going to invest a billion dollars into their ecosystem to fund new coins to bolster existing coins to compete with the rest of the metaverse now let me just say I believe you need to view this as an opportunity right Binance coin and I'm talking about the coin that's in the top five of all cryptocurrencies in the cryptoverse. But Binance coin is one of the most important coins of all, even though it's centralized. Understand, it's widely used, especially in the Binance ecosystem. And you can stake it on Trust Wallet, for example. You can stake it other places. I'm going to name where I'm staking it. I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing, right? Please don't construe anything I say in this video as financial advice. I want you to research and think for yourself. But right now, you can stake on Trust Wallet, which is available on the Google Play Store. <clears throat> you can stake Binance Coin, and they'll give you something like 15% when you factor in the compounding. Right? Without the compounding, it's 10%. Folks, if you're a bond investor getting 2% or less, this is a downright bonanza. Just understand, because this coin is the signature coin of the Binance ecosystem, right? Binance, a very powerful outfit, in my opinion, is not going to let this coin flounder. In fact, they're burning some of this coin to give it limited supply, right? To create some of the scarcity that Bitcoin has. Though I say some of the scarcity because I don't think anything can approach the level of scarcity that Bitcoin has. But Binance is trying, and I like the 10%. But let's get a little bit more ambitious than that. On Trust Wallet, you can stake PancakeSwap. Now, this is 
an automated market maker, right? This is another key part of the Binance ecosystem. And believe it or not, you can stake PancakeSwap and you get paid in PancakeSwap. Right now, you're getting 77%, <clears throat> right? I'm just telling you, it's great. You can set it and forget it. Then you come back and you see all the pancake swap you've accumulated. Now pancake swap obviously has competition in the cryptoverse from Uniswap, from Sushi Swap, to name two of the more substantial competitors. Right? But understand, in the Binance ecosystem it has no competition. And we're talking about a multi billion dollar ecosystem, the kind where Binance could announce that it's going to invest a billion dollars into its ecosystem. So when you hear that Binance has a billion dollars to spend, that means they're making a lot of money. When you hear that they're investing a billion dollars in their ecosystem, take the Binance coin with the highest market cap, its signature BNB coin, right? Consider staking that. Also consider staking Pancake Swap. I believe Pancake Swap, as I make this video, is in the top 50 market cap of all of crypto, right? Take advantage of the staking opportunities. By the way, Trust Wallet, where you could hold Bitcoin, where you could hold Dash is one of the better wallets out there. Let's continue. You know, NFTs, when you first hear about them, they're hard to get your head around, right? Then you see some of these NFTs that are selling for tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and you say, man, you know, I wouldn't pay that money if that painting was a real 3D painting, not a digital painting, right? If I, if I wouldn't pay $1,000 for that painting in the real world, why would I pay a million dollars for that painting in the metaverse, right? NFTs, non-fungible tokens, sounds like a waste of time. It's not. What I want people to do is to understand that NFTs are really a signature on the blockchain that connotes authenticity. So I want you to move a little away from the idea of paintings into digital music, for example. Folks, artists are now able to connect directly with their fans. Understand, a big-time artist could make a song for one particular fan, and the fan, of course, would have that song on the blockchain for all to see, and everyone would know it's authentic, that the fan hasn't spliced together some collage, some group of songs that the artist had to make it sound like the artist made the song for the fan. In other words, the concept of non-fungible tokens guarantees authenticity. Think about all the things in the digital world that that could impact, right? Digital music's one of the biggest. That space is going to change rapidly. Right now, something like 80 to 90% of the money goes to middlemen. Imagine if an artist with their own label was able to distribute their creative content directly to fans. And imagine if the fans were able to confirm that they got a personally issued digital music song from the artist rather than some bootleg someplace. Understand too, in the world of entertainment, now you have stars and celebrities who can give you a digital autograph 
that you know is authentic. Right? Some star can sign an autograph for you and say, hey, Paul, or hey, Rahim, this is from blank celebrity. And of course, on the blockchain, you could verify that the signature, in fact, came from the star. Let's go further. When I was a kid, I collected baseball cards. Sports memorabilia now has a mechanism, NFTs on the blockchain, where you could get autographs from your favorite player in an NFT on, let's say, some digital photograph of he or she scoring a bucket or something, right, in a basketball game some key bucket and of course you would be able to prove its authenticity that's what nft technology does so i want people to think about all of the sports franchises that could make money off this platform or that are making money off this platform right aren't the green bay packers community owned Aren't the Knicks, well, MSG, isn't that a publicly listed stock? Folks, if you're in the space of digital music, entertainment, and sports memorabilia, you have a chance to make money in the NFT arena. So for investors, just understand, you don't have to buy a crypto. I know people are going crazy saying, oh, I need to buy chilies and cryptos that cater to the NFT market. No, you can go in and you could buy a share of the Green Bay Packers, right? Any outfit that has intellectual property rights where you understand that the fans might want some digital piece of sports memorabilia signed by Aaron Rodgers that they could point to for years as being authentic due to the NFT technology. Right, think it over, it's very powerful. My point to you is you could invest in NFT technology without investing in crypto. Right, this is a monumental step forward for anyone who has ever bought a fate Rolex or worried about the authenticity of clothing items that they picked up from a street merchant. That problem is solved if, in fact, they can use NFT technology to confirm the authenticity of what you've purchased. You can now do that online for digital goods and products. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.